modern civilization has desensitized people. And the last of the old growth is a representation of the last of that innocence. Looking back, we revered particularly the um, red cedar because of its all covering uh, providence for our um, shelter and mobility needs, you know, canoes and the longhouses. And it was also a um, revered thing for its spiritual presence and uh, its guidance. On Canada's west coast tower some of the most magnificent forests on earth, the old growth coastal temperate rainforests of British Columbia. With its heavy rainfall and mild climate, trees can grow as tall as downtown skyscrapers and live to 2,000 years old here. They are among the largest and oldest living things to have ever existed in Earth's history. And no other ecosystem in Canada has spawned as much passion for its protection as these old growth forests do. These forests of ancient red and yellow cedars, hemlocks, amabilis fir, douglas fir, sitka spruce and big leaf maples are more structurally complex and diverse than the second growth tree plantations that they're being replaced with and which don't replicate the original old growth forests. When these forests are logged, the second growth forests that replace them are profoundly different in their structure and composition than the old growth forests that they've replaced. And if these forests are managed on a 60-year rotation, let's say, to log them every 60 years, they'll be, these second growth forests will be more profoundly different from the old growth forests than anywhere else in North America. People have argued, and I would strongly support the concept, that logging old growth forests on the coast here can in no way be considered sustainable resource management. The ecological values, the economic values, the social values, the recreational and the spiritual values uh, of the old growth forest will all be lost when those forests are logged and they're not coming back. Their unique features make them home to species that need them to survive and which are headed to extinction as second growth forests replace them. These include the marbled murlet, a seabird which nests in old growth canopies, mountain caribou, which winter in old growth in BC's inland rainforest, and spotted owls on BC's southwestern mainland coast. There were once thousands of spotted owls in BC. Today, in 2021, there are literally just three left in BC's wilds. Unbelievable. Old growth forests are vital for many other reasons too. Diverse First Nations cultures evolved over millennia in ancient forests and used the monumental cedars for dugout canoes, longhouses and totem poles, and fish the salmon and hunt the elk. The loss of old growth forests is the loss of culture. Old growth forests provide clean water, including for Vancouver and Victoria, and for wild salmon, a keystone species. Old growth temperate rainforests store more carbon per hectare than even tropical rainforests do. Logging them releases most of this stored carbon, and the ensuing second growth tree plantations never re-sequester the full amount of released carbon, which would take at least 200 years. Old growth forests are vital for tourism and recreation. People come from all around the world to see the spectacular old growth giants in BC. They're not coming to see clear cuts and tree plantations. The old tired narrative that protecting old growth forests harms the economy is just false. Studies show that protected areas, including protecting old growth, typically result in a greater net economic benefit when you factor in tourism, recreation, real estate values, skilled labor attracted by the higher quality of life provided by protected areas, non-timber forest products like wild mushrooms, recreational and commercial fishing supported by clean water and habitat provided by forests, carbon offsets, and ecosystem services like flood and erosion control. Despite their distinctive qualities, old growth forests that are centuries to millennia in age are being replaced by tree plantations that are relogged every 50 to 80 years, never to become old growth again. Thus, old growth logging isn't a renewable activity under BC's system of forestry. It's really a form of forest mining. A century of industrial logging has decimated old growth forests, eliminating well over 90% of the higher productivity stands where the trees grow the fastest and the biggest. And astoundingly, 99% of the very highest productivity stands with the largest forest giants. These forest giants are so scarce now that to cut them down is like coming across a pod of great whales or a herd of elephants and slaughtering them all. It's unethical and unnecessary. 
given that second growth alternatives dominate the forested land base now. BC is one of the very last jurisdictions in the industrialized world with these 500 to 2,000 year old forest giants. And it's also one of the very last jurisdictions where the government actively promotes the massive industrial logging of these giants. Today, the vast majority of the remaining old growth forests in BC, 80%, consists of small, stunted old growth trees with little to no timber value, growing on low productivity sites like bogs, steep rock faces, and cold subalpine elevations. This fact is not lost upon the timber industry and BC government, who include these vast tracts of stunted small trees in their statistics on how much old growth remains and how much is protected, making it seem like there's no problem that lots of old growth remains. It's like including vast amounts of monopoly money with your real money, then claiming to be a millionaire. So why stop spending your real money? Most forests in BC are second growth now. If the BC government implemented incentives and regulations to foster a sustainable, value-added second growth forest industry to create more jobs, then the remaining old growth forest could be protected while sustaining or even enhancing forestry employment levels in BC. The transition to a completely second growth forest industry is inevitable when the last of the endangered old growth trees are cut, but we need to make that transition now, while these forest giants still remain. Virtually all of the Western world is now logging second and third growth forests, while the rest of Canada is logging 100-year-old trees, not 500 or 1,000-year-old trees. In BC, we can and must do the same, but do it sustainably. Decades of major pressure has finally pushed the BC government to start a potential policy overhaul after decades of policy stagnation to start deferring old growth logging in certain areas and to eventually protect more old growth forests. But the BC government doesn't want to do this. They've been pushed there by hundreds of thousands of citizens over decades. Now, at the 11th hour, there's increasing frustration at the BC government's continued heel dragging, PR spin, and consultations about the previous consultations. This talk and log approach is their attempt to buy time for the status quo of old growth liquidation, which will ultimately result in negotiations over big stumps. The growing public frustration has led to a revival in the war in the woods in BC. The world needs to see that this is so important that people are willing to put their bodies on the line. I do believe firmly that this really shows not only the world but also the communities and our government and industry that, that there is no more social license for this type of behaviour. You know, I've spent a lot of time trying to get people out to experience these forests for themselves because I feel like you until you until you're in it you really don't understand so that's another reason why I feel like this type of grassroots direct action movement is an important piece in the bigger puzzle of creating social change. If the BC government is serious about finally ending this conflict they need to act fast with no more spin, sophistry, excuses and heel dragging. They need to fully get on board the international momentum to expand protected areas to avert the extinction and climate crises. They need to make the deferral and protection of high productivity or monumental old growth forests, the ecological heart of the ancient forests, central to their mandate, along with other most at risk old growth like the oldest, most intact and rarest ecosystems. Old growth forests are overwhelmingly on the unceded territories of diverse First Nations across BC. New protected areas cannot be established without First Nations consent. It's vital that the BC government provide the critical funding to support First Nations old growth protection initiatives, like Indigenous protected areas and land use plans, and for sustainable economic alternatives. The Mears Island, Wanachus Hilhu is tribal park was declared in 1983 or 1984, and our nation has since then declared all of our traditional territory a tribal park in recent years. I could talk all day about uses of the tribal park and how it benefits our community in helping me learn my language and helping uh, us do cedar bark weaving and how it feeds us in different ways and how it inspires songs for our community. But along with that is our responsibility to it as people of this place. We have a responsibility to it. and. Though in English we have to say this is our territory, we have to assert it and, and describe it that way, in our language we belong to this territory and that's a different approach. Um, it's something that we need to keep 
in order to continue sharing a life with it. A provincial land acquisition fund is also needed to purchase and protect old growth on private lands. New legislation must put ecosystem integrity first and all limits or caps on timber supply impacts that conservation policies can have must be removed. If the BC government doesn't act now, we'll not see the likes of these ancient forests again. There's no second chance here and this is a time-constrained issue. It takes a large-scale broad-based movement of diverse people to affect fundamental social and political change. Your help is vital to make this happen. Please speak up now. Of all times, this is the time. We're back to another big war in the woods to save what is precious to all British Columbians. And I think on Vancouver Island, we, this is the last stand for the ancient forests. The big old giants will be gone forever unless we act now. In the end, perhaps the most fundamental reason why ancient forests are so important is because more than any other ecosystem, they're a catalyst to shift human consciousness. Their sheer grandeur and magnificence of their towering ancient giants, like nature's cathedrals, seem to imbue in people a sense of humility, to know that we're part of something much bigger and greater than ourselves. And it's that sense of humility that's vital to help us learn the respect and restraint needed to develop an ecologically harmonious society connected to the much greater community of life upon which all our fates depend. <laughs>